practice actually be so good that it's bad? Does that even make sense? How can your practice be so good that it's bad? Well, that's something that we're going to be talking about today on the Dental Practice Fixers podcast, along with some mystery shopper calls and all kinds of other great stuff. Hey there, I'm Dr. Richard Maddow. I'm co-founder of the Maddow Center for Dental Practice Success, and I'm your host on the Dental Practice Fixers podcast, and this is our first podcast of 2024. Wow, it's 2024 already. How crazy. Anyway, thanks so much for being here with me and joining thousands of dentists and dental team members all across the world. Hey, I just want to remind you to reference the show notes when you're listening or watching because there are five things on there that you can do right now that will help your practice immensely. And one of them is to subscribe to our e newsletter comes out about four to five times per week it's free of course and i'll give you some practice building tips some fun stories also um, remind you about some upcoming webinars and seminars that we have you definitely should do it so check out the show notes if you can't check out the show notes for any reason just go to matto.com slash newsletter you can sign up directly there matto.com slash newsletter and we do drawings if you sign up for the newsletter you're automatically entered into a drawing to get a dental practice fixers coffee mug what could be better than that you can sip your morning coffee tea kombucha whatever you're drinking these days in your very own dental practice fixers coffee mug hey something i was thinking about and something i want to do on the podcast for 2024 maybe one of our goals here at the matter center is to be able to turn you on to more services and products and things that can help grow your dental practice. So over the next few weeks, I'm gonna be thinking about that um, and really come up with some great tips and tricks for you by turning you into some products, some services, some other things that can help you grow your practice or save money or enjoy your practice more or be protected legally or all kinds of cool things. And the reason I thought about that is because we keep getting so many nice comments about our recommendation of stacks. As you may know, Stax is somewhat of a sponsor of our podcast, and I love having them as a sponsor because we actually use them at the Matto Center, and their low flat monthly fee is saving dental practices all across the country thousands or tens of thousands of dollars on their credit card processing bill. So for now, just go to matto.com slash save to learn more about how you can do the same and stop paying that overage percentage and just pay that flat monthly fee. All right, so some good things to look forward to in 2024. Now, can your dental practice be so good that it's bad? That just sounds really weird. I'll tell you a little fun story. Um, As many of you know, I have two brothers, David and Marshall, and they are both dentists. And David is co-founder and partner in the Matto Center. He's a dentist. Marshall's a dentist as well. And he's done a bunch of stuff with us at the Matto Center, especially if you attended TBSE in Las Vegas. You probably met Marshall and saw him on stage. But anyway, when the three of us were kids, we used to spend some time hanging out at our cousin's house. I'll call our cousin Mark for now. Let's just call him Mark. And we spent some time hanging out at his house from time to time. Now, Mark was one of those people who, when he got into something, he really got in it. I mean, he, as we would say today, he immersed himself in it. His knowledge was deep. And he always had to have the best of everything. I'm not sure how, but he also seemed to have somewhat of an unlimited budget, which is something that when we were kids, we certainly did not have. But Mark was just always in the things. He studied them deeply. He always had the best of everything. So one day we're visiting Mark. And as you know, we all love music in the early Maddow house and now in all of our respective households. Music's a huge part of our lives. And Mark was showing off his new stereo system. And he had done all the research. He read all the articles. He probably went to the finest audio store in town. I'm telling you, I had never seen anything like this rig before. He had a huge, massive reel-to-reel tape player, a separate amplifier and tuner, tremendous tower speakers, and lots more. Those of you who are maybe Gen Zs don't even know what I'm talking about because our stereo systems, our music systems are so compact these days. For many people, it's just their iPhone and their earbuds or a nice set of headphones and and things can sound great that way. But back in the day, we had these humongous, massive stereo systems with many different components. And if you got the finest stuff around, I mean, you could spend as much as a car 
on your stereo system. And for the early 70s, this was a state-of-the-art stereo system that probably did cost as much as a car. It was unbelievable. And I was so excited for the moment of truth. Cousin Mark was going to put on some music and let us hear what his stereo system sounded like. So I couldn't wait to hear this amazing hi-fi, as we used to call them. That means high fidelity. So Cousin Mark loads up this reel-to-reel -reel tape. He pushes play. He cranks it up to a volume that probably the neighbors could even enjoy. And the sound's pouring out of these monstrous speakers. And I remember my brothers and I, we just looked at each other in disbelief. Why? Because it sounded so great? Well, not really. I mean, we were expecting that thing to sound like Abbey Road Studios, but it wasn't even close. It, it didn't even really sound good at all. It was kind of nuts. This unbelievably expensive, well-researched, massive component hi-fi stereo system didn't really sound that good. I remember I was like afraid to say anything to Cousin Mark, like, Mark, I don't really think it sounds so good, but I guess we got up the guts and one of us told Mark that we didn't really think it sounded that great. And I just remember, Mark oh, it was always one of those guys that had a real calm voice. He just explained everything so calmly and confidently. And he just very scientifically explained that the sound reproduction on this stereo was so incredibly accurate. It was so precise. It was so great that every single crackle and imperfection came through and it made it actually somewhat unpleasant to listen to. This was really weird. I mean, I guess he like proudly wound up concluding that my speakers are so good, my stereo is so good that it actually sounds bad. I don't know. I just don't know. It's so good that it sounds bad. And this kind of got me thinking about a problem that we can have in dentistry. Can we be so good that we're bad. And I'm not talking about clinical dentistry. Obviously, in clinical dentistry, we need to strive for perfection. Even if it's close to impossible, we need to strive for perfection. I mean, if something's pretty good, pretty, pretty good, from a clinical standpoint, that's usually not a good thing. I mean, your margins can't be slightly open. Your occlusion can't just be like off by a tad. That just doesn't fly in clinical dentistry, unless you did your absolute best and that was the best result one could hope for. That's different. But when it comes to all of the non-clinical things that it takes to succeed in dentistry, and of course, that's what we specialize in at the Matter Center, the non-clinical side, it can be really dangerous to be too much of a perfectionist. Um, reminds me of this quote by Voltaire, il meglio e l'inimico del bene, which I probably just totally screwed up, but it translates roughly to perfection is the enemy of good. Perfection is the enemy of good. And it's so true. Sometimes when you try so hard to be perfect, you don't even wind up being good. You just wind up being nothing. And I, all the time I hear dentists say things like, um, I'm going to hire a hygienist. As soon as my current hygienist is 100% booked three months out, in other words, when things are too good to be true with my current hygienist, that's when I'll get around to hiring a new one. Or um, I'm going to, this is for a younger dentist that doesn't own a practice yet, and their goal is to own a practice. They'll say, I'm going to take the plunge into practice ownership when I find the perfect practice in the perfect location, in the perfect setting for the perfect price. Well, guess what? It never happens. Perfect is the enemy of good. Or this one drives me crazy when a dentist will, will talk about, will say, hey, maybe you should delegate more things out. You're being stressed out and you're working too hard and you're just killing yourself doing all these things that you shouldn't be doing. They'll say, well, I have to do this myself because no one can do this as good as me. Well, maybe that's true, but you shouldn't be doing every single thing in the dental office. You've got a great team. Let's delegate some things out. Perfect is the enemy of good. We can waste so much time trying to make things perfect, and then nothing ever really gets done. I call this paralysis by analysis in some situations, and dentists really, really frequently get caught up in this. I mean, you got to analyze every single detail, trying to get everything just right, and then nothing gets done. So as a dental coach and an actual dentist, this thing really bugs me the most when someone says, I'm going to start coaching as soon as I have my new staff in place or as soon as I drop that insurance plan or any number of situations. And they're just really putting off the inevitable practice improvement for one reason or another, usually because they're afraid and they wind up doing nothing and then nothing happens. So just remember, let's not let our constant chase for perfection 
prevent us from moving forward when things are actually good enough. Now, I'm not saying you should settle for mediocrity, but sometimes we just let perfectionism get in the way of never moving forward, or we allow paralysis by analysis to be used as an excuse not to take action, when it's really just a cover up for not having the guts to take a chance on something. Take a chance, take a chance, take a chance. You know, if you're waiting for your speakers to be so good that they sound bad, then maybe you'll get exactly what you deserve. Speakers that are so good, they sound bad. So that's my little spiel on perfectionism. Perfectionism can be the enemy of really, 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 really good. So please don't let that happen to you. Okay, let's get around to, I know some people's favorite part of the podcast, and that is our famous, our soon to be famous, our almost famous, mystery shopper calls. I called a bunch of practices today for the first podcast of the year. I wanted wanted to go kind of back to basics. So I just did this simple one of my old favorites. How much is a cleaning and checkup? Something along those lines. This is a question that a lot of potential new patients ask when they call your office. And it's so important that you give this answer correctly and get them on the schedule. Some people this week did pretty decent. Some didn't. Let's find out. Let's start with this one. Hit it. Call number one. It's Robin speaking. How may I help you? Hey, I want to know um, how much it costs for a regular checkup and cleaning. Uh, for at pocket was like how much? It could go for it goes from like a pocket. Well, I don't think I, I have mean, pockets. Yeah. Oh, out of pocket. It, it it could go from like one once. Hold on. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Sure. One second, it depends on if you need x-rays. When's the last time you've been to the dentist? Um, it was about nine months ago. So you have recent x-rays then? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. okay. All right, so you're talking 87, and then the cleaning is 92, one, two, and then the x-rays. So you're talking about maybe a two hundred dollars, hundred eighty-five to two hundred. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Hold on, let me do the math. Let me get my phone. Hold on. I mean, you don't have to do it like to the penny. That's okay. Adult Profi plus X rays. Yeah, it could go from 200 to 264. If you can get the X rays, that would probably help more. I'll definitely see if I could do that. I'm, I'm, I'm sure they did the full set. I think. Yeah. I hope. So, yeah. yeah. If you can get those X rays, and you're good. We won't um, have to Okay. I'm, great. Okay. Well, I want to be good, so um, <laughs> I'll try to do that. Thank you so much for the estimate. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Oh, man, she really rushed me off the phone quick there at the end. This call was kind of crazy. I thought it was a pretty normal question. How much is the checkup with cleaning? She was so flustered at the beginning, like, what, what, pockets? She, then she starts, like, saying, pockets? Do you have pockets? Is it out of pocket? I didn't know what she was talking about with the pockets. Um, and she just was so flustered right from the get-go. She was acting like, I called with a question, like, can you please calculate the formula to send three astronauts to the moon using only hydrogen? I mean, <laughs> what? It was not that tough of a question. Then she's calculating and doing all this stuff. And she says, yeah, you're looking about 200 to 240. I said, okay, whatever. And then she says, okay, bye. <laughs> Rushes me off the phone. Total fail. Complete missed opportunity. Okay, let's try another one. Why not? This is what we do here office. Hi, um, question for you. I've never uh-huh. been to your office before, but I think I'm overdue for like a checkup and cleaning. Okay. Um, how much would something like that usually cost? Um, do you have insurance? I have insurance, yeah. Okay. Um, which dental insurance do you have? Oh, oh, dental insurance. I thought you meant, I've got like, like um, all state insurance for my home. I don't know about dental insurance. Gotcha. Um, so without dental insurance, I believe it is around 135 for just a routine checkup and um, a cleaning. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Is that with x-rays or without? What was that? I was just curious if that was with x-rays. Yeah, I was going to say most people get um, four bite wing x-rays to um, like once a year. Let me just check the price for you just to be sure. It's going to take me one second. Oh, sure. Okay, so for the cleaning for adults, it's $88. Um, for the bite wings, which are the x-rays, it's $83. And then just the entire evaluation is $78. Okay, so it's three different charges then. So that was like 80, 81, so like in the 230, 240 range. Yeah, it would, yeah, it would be around 250. 250. But the x-rays, again, are only once a mm -hmm. Yeah, about yeah. once a year, so... Um, Okay. And then do you do yeah. crowns there also? I know my last dentist said I might need a crown or two. Yes, we do. Um, he'll probably have to check it out first and see, you know, what the most appropriate, you know, plan is for you, but we do crowns. Um, if you need an implant or anything, we usually send you over to an oral surgeon, but he does the crown for the implants as well. Oh, okay. So why, So you you don't do implants there? We don't do the surgical part. We just do the um, the crown over the implant. Got it. I don't think I need yeah. an implant, though. What's an implant for? Um, an implant is usually for when you can't really salvage a tooth with a root canal therapy or anything like that, so you have to extract the entire tooth. And when you have, you know, the empty space there, you usually get an implant. But there are Got other it. options as well. So, again, you know, if you wanted to come here and get a consultation or a cleaning, he'll, you know, give you some idea of what the most appropriate thing for you to do is. Got it, got it. Well, hey, mm -hmm. thank you so much for all the information. That was great. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Did you want to go ahead and schedule or did you want to um, wait a little bit? You can definitely give us a call back whenever you're ready. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll give you a call back as soon as I'm ready. All right, sounds good. Thank you great. for calling. Great, thank you so much. Oh, you no got problem. it. My pleasure. Thanks. Bye. All right, bye. Oh, she was so close. She was so close. Did you do you want to schedule? Now, she should have said, "Do you want to schedule? I can see you tomorrow at 3 p.m. or Wednesday at noon, whatever it was." But instead, she said, "Do you want to schedule or do you want to wait a little bit?" She gave me two choices, and one was to wait a little bit. Given two choices, most people will just take the easier one, which is putting it off. I don't know why she offered that as a choice. Totally unnecessary. A couple other weird things in this call. Why does she start talking about how the dentist doesn't do implants and, and sends them out? I never mentioned implants. I never told her I was missing a tooth. Just out of nowhere. She said, I mean, why didn't she just say the dentist doesn't do uh, um, endo on four canal molars? It was really weird. She just started saying um, the dentist doesn't do implants completely out of nowhere. Secondly, as you notice, two calls in a row had to start doing all these calculations when I asked how much the initial visit was. Now, I'm not saying that you should give a discount on the initial visit if you want to, kind of a new patient special, that's great. If you don't want to, that's fine also, whatever suits your practice best. But I think sometimes it might be convenient to have like a set fee for a first, a typical first visit, just so you can tell the patient that or maybe put it somewhere on your website or whatever, typically what a first visit costs. And nobody was really prepared with that. So again, wasn't horrible. She did some weird things, but then at the very end, completely blew it because she gave me one, and she gave me, I'm sorry, she gave me two choices. And one of the choices, she made it very clear that it's perfectly okay to wait and call later. And of course I took that choice like most people would. Okay, let's do another one. Okay, I'm just gonna end that one. In case you're wondering what's going on, unfortunately the very beginning didn't happen. I just, this is a really weird thing. I called this number that my team gave me as a dental office. I double checked afterwards to make sure, yes, it was indeed a dental office. And nobody answered or said anything. As you heard, it just went straight to this weird computer generated music. Now, this is a phone number on a dental practices website. I just called and it just went straight to this weird music. Um, so what I'm saying about this is, yes, 
it's really bad. But every now and then, especially if you're saying, oh, it's a slow phone day, <laughs> you might want to call your own office number and make sure that something's not messed up like that. Just an example of what can happen sometimes where things are a little bit of a mess. Okay, a couple more calls to go. Allie. Hey, Allie. Um, I'm looking for a new dental office. I just moved into um, into state, and I just want to know: Are you seeing new patients? And like, what does the first visit entail? If so, um, we are seeing new patients. Um, we would just have to probably schedule you right now for about February, um, and we would schedule your first appointment appointment for two hours. Um, and then, depending on your dental insurance and everything, would depend on the cost. And what do you do in two hours? That's a long first appointment. So it's because it'll be the first appointment, they have to establish care. So we would have to, you know, take x-rays and do all of that stuff um, since we haven't seen you before. And do I get a cleaning at that visit? Yes, sir. You would get a cleaning and then um, the exam with the doctor. Got it. But not for like a month, it sounds like. Yes, I believe right now our first appointments for a new patient are about um, the second week in February, possibly. Yikes. Wow. You guys must be really busy and good. <laughs> okay. I think so. Yeah, well, that's, that's a good thing since you work there. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a little long for me to wait, um, but thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a good day. You too. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Mm, 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 mm. Wow. Okay. I, I did this call very early January. They were booking new patients for the second week in February, which, as you know, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, I think is completely unacceptable. You've got to have dedicated new patient time on the schedule. Even so, even so, and she wasn't horrible. She wasn't bad. Even so, she could have said, well, I'll tell you what, let's get you on the calendar for the second week in February but I'm gonna put you on our short call list and if we have a change in our schedule, I will call you right away to see if you can take it. Under those circumstances, there's a decent chance that I would have done it, but no way, the way she just said it, most people, many people will not take this appointment because you know, when we're ready, we're ready and we're making the call, we're ready to come in five weeks, not so sure that cuts it. So again, that's not a good circumstance, but she could have made the best of it by at least saying, instead of just ushering me off the phone, at least saying, well, I'll tell you what, let's make the appointment. And if we get a change in our schedule, I will let you know right away. And hopefully you'll be able to take that appointment. So um, not giving that one a good grade. Let's do one more. Let me help you. Uh, yeah, I have a question before. Um, I've not been to your office before, but I'm pretty sure I'm due for like a checkup and a cleaning. How much would a, an appointment like that be? Okay, may I please have your name? Sure, you may. My name is Richard Humashi. Okay, and spell your last name for me, please. H-U-M-A-S-H-E-E. -E. And which doctor did you see when you came in, Mr. Humashi? I've never been in before. That's why I was oh, asking about a checkup and cleaning. Right. Oh, okay. You've never been seen before. Well, thank you so much for choosing our office. And how did you hear about our office, Mr. Abachi? Um, Just a little Googling around. Okay, awesome. Um, so there's an estimate for the cleaning. Um, it's an oral evaluation, um, the cleaning, and x-rays, um, perio charting, and a uh, scan that's done for an estimate of $388. Um, we also have a... Um, an office dental benefits plan um, for patients that do not have insurance um, as well. Um, and that estimate would be um, $479 per person per year. And that would and include. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so what do you get for that $479 a year? Mm -hmm, yes, yeah, certainly. So it's two dental cleanings, um, a consultation, exam x-rays, oral evaluation, fluoride if needed, oral cancer screening, up to two emergency visits with the x-rays, and for dental procedures, um, there will be a 15% discount 
Um, and if you're using CARE credit, it would be a 5% discount. Okay, now when you were just telling me about the regular checkup and cleaning, you started listing all these things. I, I wasn't really sure what they were, but what was the last one you said? Uh -huh, certainly. So um, for the cleaning itself would be a comprehensive oral evaluation, your cleaning, the x-rays. There's also a period charting done during that visit and a scan of your mouth as well. Oh, wow. Um, so on the plan, you said oral cancer screening, but you didn't say that with just the checkup, so you don't get that with just the regular checkup? Um, that, that is the screening. It's just listed as a screening, but it's the same exact thing. Got it. And what's the scan of your mouth mean? Um, so the scan is done. We have these wonderful machines that um, instead of doing um, like each individual picture, although we're doing that as well, the scan just kind of goes across your mouth, across the gum lines, just to make sure that there's no cancerous um, indications there. Um, and it's fairly quickly um, done. And the um, hygienist, um, you know, perform that, and then the doctor will come in and do the evaluation and go over everything well, with you. Wow, so it's like a cancer scan. I'm sorry? It's like a cancer okay. scan? It, it's a scan of the mouth. Mm-hmm. Uh, not like a cancer machine like Cousin Barry invented. Um, wow, that's a lot of information. All right, cool. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Okay. And did you want to go ahead and schedule your appointment? I think I'm not quite ready yet, um, but thanks for all that info. Oh, okay, no problem. My name is Paul, so I'll be happy to assist you again. Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Take care. Have a great day. Oh, you too. Bye. Wow, that was a lot to go through. I'm exhausted just listening to that call. I think this is a great way to end this podcast because to me, this was an example of how perfect is the enemy of good. To me, she seemed way over scripted, maybe overly trained. I, people use that word scripting all the time. And I know what you mean by scripting and it can be a great thing. But to me, she seemed robotic. Like either she just memorized this thing word for word or she was just reading something from a piece of paper, even in the beginning, like, what's your name? How did you find out about us? What's this? What's that? How long has it been? Then, then she didn't even remember the beginning. I said I hadn't been in yet because she asked me which dentist I usually see. Why? Because she was following the script line for line. She wasn't even listening. I think in this case, perfect was the enemy of good. Um, at least she asked me for the appointment though at the end. So we'll give her some credit for that. I guess that was on the script. But at times I felt like I was talking to a robot and not a human being. Okay, that's going to wrap it up. That will totally wrap it up for this week's episode of the Dental Practice Fixers podcast. If you want to send me an email, and I really hope you do, my personal email address is rich at matto.com, R-I-C-H at M-A-D-O-W.com. And if you want to help dentists and team members all across the country or world if you just want to pass along the good stuff and help our friends and colleagues, go give us a nice high rating, five star, thumbs up, whatever it is, wherever you're listening to or watching the podcast. If you want to take another few seconds and write a little comment in there, that would be great. You can find out more about the Matto Center at matto.com. And I'm Dr. Richard Matto. Thanks so much for listening. I'll see you soon.